What up, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the first ever episode of I Have a Rant. And if you're wondering what this is, well, the title pretty much explains itself. It is a show by the Playgrounder, me, Zach Wilson, where I basically talk about something NBA related that has been on my mind for the past little bit, and I just feel the need to get it off my chest. And as you can see by the title, this first one is around Pascal Siakam, and no, I am not going to take this time to slander his playoff performance and to criticize his game. I feel like there's enough of that online, and it's more directed towards those people criticizing his game. Now, I do want to get a couple things out of the way. There are some people who are absolutely attacking him personally online, and that is just... That is enough that's like that's absolutely where i draw the line that is not the people i am targeting with this either but i do just want to say that there have been racist comments and personal attacks that they just don't need to be said and you need to understand at the end of the day these guys are human beings and you know you wouldn't want to be personally attacked like that if you for a week or so don't perform well at your job so i'm not even going to give those comments life by going into detail about them but i did just want to get that out of the way first But there are also some people who are criticizing his game fairly. And no, he did not play well. In no way am I trying to defend the way he played in the playoffs because I understand he was their best player for the whole season. And you kind of expected him as a Raptors fan and as an NBA fan to play like it. And, you know, it's fair criticism for Raptors fans to be a bit upset. Although I see people coming at him like, trade him, we paid him too much, and... I just want to put that into perspective. So first off, why don't we look at some of his regular season numbers where he averaged 23 points per game, seven rebounds, three and a half assists. He started in the all-star game. I think a lot of us like to look at such small samples when we're looking at how a guy performed this season. We can't forget that this guy was a starting all-star. We were looking at him for, you know, a potential all NBA spot and he still potentially might get it. It may look a little bad now but we have to remember those are regular season awards last year he played fantastic as a second option even in the playoffs he was fantastic him and Kawhi were setting all sorts of duo record scoring numbers last year he averaged 17 points per game in the playoffs shot it decently efficient you know not the greatest but still better than what would he put up this year and he played fantastic and obviously was a big contribution to the Raptors winning the title last year Now let's put some things into perspective. I see some people saying, well, we overpaid him. We shouldn't have given him that max contract. How about we start off by looking at what Pascal made this year, which was 2.5 million. He was the 304th highest paid player in the league. It was actually 2.3 million. So yes, if this happens next year, this argument can be taken off the books. But for now, It is a reasonable argument. He only makes 2.3 mil. Why don't we look at some of the other guys making right around 2.3, 2.4 mil? How about I name off some of these guys and you let me know that even with Pascal's poor performance, you think the Raptors would have been better with some of these guys out there. Scalabissier, Terrence Ferguson, Manu Ginobili, Damian Jones, Aaron Holiday. And how about my favorite two, Emeka Okafor and Kendrick Perkins. Now, Raptors fans, are you really upset that you paid Pascal 2.3 mil to do that? Or would you rather pay Kendrick Perkins 2.4 mil to run his mouth on TV? It's a fair question. Now let's look at his improvement. Pascal Siakam hasn't even been a starter in this league for two seasons. I didn't even say all-star. He hasn't been a starter in the NBA for two full seasons. Because if you remember at the beginning of last year, him and OG Ananobi were platooning starting spots depending on the matchup. Now, Pascal did start for the large majority of the season. He, He started 79 games, but he did platoon the first few until he really, really took off. And then if you look at this year, yes, he started every single game he played, but it wasn't even a full season. There was only 60 regular season games. So to this point... He hasn't started a full entire season, even though last season was fairly, fairly close to that. But the point still stands that he hasn't started for two complete full seasons. So how about we look at the 2017-2018 season where he came off the bench. That was only two years ago, remember. He averaged 7.3 points per game two seasons ago. 
Now I went back, I did some research and looked at the 2017-2018 season at some players who were in that, you know, seven points per game range, right around Pascal Siakam. So how about I name off some of these guys and you let me know that you would take some of these guys on your team over Pascal for this playoff run, even considering how poor he played. Darius Miller, Tyler Eulis, Alec Burks, Mario Chalmers, Marquise Chris, Jarrell Martin. How about we even look at some guys who averaged double digits a couple years ago, up in you know the 10, 11, 12 points per game range? Ish Smith, Ersan Ilyasova, Frank Kaminsky, Wayne Ellington, Terry Rozier. Now, obviously, I'm picking off some people's names because there are some guys who a couple years ago played really well this year, you know, and two years ago they they weren't the best guys like De'Aaron Fox and Demonis Sabonis who averaged 11 points per game, but they improved too, just like Pascal. Not to mention, if we just go back to this year, Pascal was one of the best defensive players on the Raptors, and I think that doesn't get enough credit. It is so hard as a basketball player to play poor offensively and then come out on the defensive end with full effort and full intensity without getting that mental block in your head and without getting so down in yourself that you can't perform on that end because your offensive game has been so weak. Pascal Siakam was a huge reason that that small ball lineup worked. Him and OG taking turns guarding the four and five, whether it was guys like Tice or guys like Tatum or Brown, Pascal was a fantastic defender this series, and some people will look at some very specific plays where, oh, look, he got blown by Tatum twice in a row. Oh, look, he got blown by Brown. That happens when you're playing against offensive players who are as talented as Jason Tatum, Kemba Walker, Jalen Brown, or even Marcus Smart for this series. You're going to get blown by. You're going to get shots made on you. Now, Pascal Siakam... No, he did not have a good offensive series, or bubble for that matter. But I think we also have to take in the circumstance. This is a historic moment. This is something that likely will never happen again. And at least I know NBA fans are really hoping hoping it never happens again because, you know, that would mean just no fans in stadiums again. So this is such an isolated situation from any other NBA game. No fans. Neutral court. Three months in between the season. And Pascal was one of those guys who didn't have access to a court or a net. So he came in really rusty. And yes, there were guys who were also in that same boat that got into their rhythm. Pascal wasn't one of them. So no, I'm I'm not taking that as a full discredit of everything he did. I'm not just trying to make up for it. But it is a, a truthful reason. And on top of that, we're acting like we've never seen him play well in the playoffs before. We literally just went over his numbers last year and what he did in the playoffs. The second best or third best player, depending where you rank him and Lowry last season, on a championship team. Pascal Siakam is not the number one guy on a championship team. And who knows if he ever will be because there's very few of those guys in the league. To me personally, I have a list of four guys that for sure can be the first option on a championship team. And that's LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, Kevin Durant, and Stephen Curry. And then I have a couple guys, a tier behind that, who I think probably could in Giannis and James Harden. And I know that sounds super silly after these playoffs, but I do I do really believe that they could be in the right situation. I have Luka Doncic in that tier also. And honestly, Nikola Jokic might be making his way up into that tier too. And then Embiid is probably somewhere around there. Now, that's obviously running off the list. That list still starts off with just those top four who are in that top tier, number one guy on a championship team, LeBron, KD, Steph, and Kawhi. You would be foolish to tell me that Pascal's as good as any of those guys or that you ever at any point during this season, last season, or any time in their careers that Pascal's been as good as those guys. A s- superstar is what puts you over the top. A really good team can make a really good playoff push, come really close to the finals, maybe even make the finals, but you need a superstar to really win you that title. I mean, we can look back all the way through the years of last year the Raptors had Kawhi, the Warriors had a couple of them, as I mentioned. The Cavs, they had LeBron. The Heat, they had LeBron. The Spurs had guys like Duncan. The Mavericks had Nowitzki. Like, you can look back so many years, and they're superstar, 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 superstar. 
Now, I didn't, I don't think it was necessarily foolish to believe that the Raptors couldn't win it this year because they had such a strong collection of talent, but we saw the absence of a superstar and what it does for you. Another stat I do want to point out is that Pascal had the worst three point percentage in a series in NBA history, and that is obviously not a pretty stat. He did not shoot well at all. But guess who the second last and third last guys on that list are? Jason Kidd and Damian Lillard. Now, those two series weren't very good for those players either, and I'm sure they were getting just as much slander back at the time. But they turned out pretty darn good, so I wouldn't be worried about Pascal. Is he a superstar? No, because my list as a superstar pertains just to those four guys I mentioned. Is he an all-star? Yes, he's still an all-star. Did he play like it? No. But guys have bad playoff runs. Guys have bad stretches. Don't worry, Raptors fans. Pascal's going to be fine. There are 29 other GMs who would want Pascal on their team. I guess I should just say 30 because the Raptors still do and Masai still does. They didn't overpay for him. He is a good player. He just had a bad stretch.